It's awesome that Jason Collins broke the glass ceiling of gay athletes in American sports, becoming the first active male athlete in one of the four major American sports to come out. But it's unclear if he'll land a spot on a team next season, considering that he hardly played for one of the worst teams in the league this last season. Statistician Nate Silver broke down in pure basketball terms the chances that Collins will play next season. He looked for players between the ages of 33 and 35 who played either forward or center who played in 30 to 50 games and who started 5 to 15 times. And of the 18 players he found 11 or 61% played the following season. In a way it makes it more commendable that Collins came out because it could mean the end of his career if he faces discrimination that lessens his odds of playing again. On the other hand, it continues the trend that we've seen when players come out when they're retired. The devil's advocate would say that if Collins were truly brave, he would have come out five or ten years ago. I'm personally not making that argument. I think it's great that Collins came out the way he did when he did, and I can sympathize with him probably feeling like it just wasn't worth it in the political climate a few years ago before the number of gay rights milestones we've seen in the past few years like Don't Ask Don't Tell being repealed or gay marriage passing in several states or the Supreme Court even arguing on the merits of gay marriage, let alone President Obama coming out himself in favor of gay marriage. But if Colin's career is indeed over, it means that that glass ceiling will still have to be broken. And whether or not he plays again, we still have a ways to go because we've yet to have a gay athlete in the four major American sports come out in their prime, let alone in high school or college before they're even drafted. So the people who are hailing this as a paradigm shifting moment in American sports need a bit of a reality check, but at the same time, hopefully Collins coming out and receiving the support that he's received will help take the edge off some of the other more active players who are wrestling with the decision themselves. A team in a progressive city like New York or LA or Portland or Miami or Boston or Chicago or of course San Francisco may sign him just to make a statement and benefit from the great PR it would generate for their franchise. And Collins would of course benefit by increasing his historic standing and increasing the value of his brand which could become quite lucrative as an endorser of products marketed toward gay men. And if this is the reason that Collins plays next year, some will say that this is unfortunate, that his sexuality should have no bearing on his ability to play in the NBA and whether or not a team signs him. But remember, the NBA is a brand too. It's big business. And wouldn't the true sign of progress, the true test, be that a team wants to sign him and play him partly because he's gay instead of passing him over because he's gay? 